From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of Hot Chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. All right. Welcome to the Rick Altizer Show. Thank you, Bob Allen, for that wonderful introduction. This is your host, Rick Altizer. And for those who uh, listened last week, you'll you'll remember it was kind of a little goofy uh, little show. Some friends have said, Rick, you need to do a show interviewing yourself. You need to kind of tell your story. So I did a little uh, experiment, something I've never done before. I just sat and kind of talked here to you uh, without doing an interview. Usually I'm interviewing someone. And so it was a, a new thing for me to just talk myself. But last week was part one of how to make a movie, how to make a movie part one. And today is going to be part two. If you missed last week's interview, you can go to rickaltizer.com and you can hear that. That's uh, Rick, A-L-T-I-Z-E-R.com. And you can hear uh, what I did last week. So just for kind of an, an update, kind of for those who might have missed, I have been working with, uh, I started out in, in the music industry as a recording artist and then uh, started a company uh, with a business partner and, and we started doing music products. We transitioned over into film, needing to get out of uh, the music industry that was dying and going away. Uh, so we, we got into uh, doing some work in the movie industry, Christian movie industry. And uh, through my uh, association and work with Shonda Pierce, who is a Christian comedian, has won an award for the top selling female comedian in history. So very, very popular female comedian. And I've been doing some work with her, doing her video, uh, doing her you know, audio, just mostly her media for quite a few years. And she's, she had communicated to me that she wanted to make a movie. And I said, uh, uh, well, I can't make a movie because I've never really done anything like that, but I could do a demo tape, a five minute demo tape. And I explained last week about the demo tape back in the day when you had cassette tapes, you would make three songs and you'd send them to record labels. And if somebody liked it, They'd want to hear more, and if they liked that, then they'd bring you in and record three songs in a recording studio, and if they liked that, then they'd give you a record deal. So the demo tape was kind of your first door, first way into the door, and so I, I said to Shonda, we can make a little five-minute demo tape. Maybe somebody will see it and want to do something and want to want to make a movie. I could never make you a movie, but I could do a five-minute demo tape, so uh, the, the first... Uh, The first point that I wanted to make for last week was that a good idea is not a good idea unless it can be executed. So uh, when you sit around in your office and you sit around in your meetings and people have these ideas, uh, you can you can tell what which what good ideas are not good immediately if it's something that cannot be executed. If that's something we can't do, that is not a good idea. Uh, Good ideas are only things you can do. And so I, I said, well, I can do five minutes. That's something I can execute. I had a camera. I had a lens. I had a little shoulder mount. I had a tripod. I had some recording. You know, I'm in, I'm in the music. I've been in music forever, so I've got tons of recording things that I can could use to record with. So that wasn't a problem. Uh, but I had never really made any kind of film or, you know, documentary or anything before. So we went out on the road. I made a demo tape for her. My five minutes. Uh, I went out for about a weekend, four day weekend. My five minutes turned into 16 minutes. I said last week that my, from my experience as a record producer, I, I realized that the same skill set I used as a record producer was used as a, as a, a film director. It was very much the same kind of stuff. Um, and, and it was coming easy to me. It's like, well, well, this is just telling a story the same way I would uh, producing a record. I'm just kind of getting my story across, getting my sound across, getting my record across. So uh, we, we made uh, my five-minute demo tape turn into be 16 minutes, of which about 10 ended up in the film, and, and we'll get to that later. But uh, So um, Shonda and her manager, and this, is all, this is all just repeat from last week, Shonda and her manager took me out to lunch and said, Rick, we love what you've done. You know, we want you to make this. We want you to make this, this, this film. We think you are the one to do this. 
And, uh, you know, I was kind of blown away by that. But I recognized immediately, okay, every now and then you recognize this is an opportunity that's probably not going to come again uh, in a very long time. So you've got one or two options. You can, you can be afraid and let this opportunity slip by you, or you can go, you know what, this is a great opportunity. You know, God obviously has put me here, and only this can only happen in a, in a God situation. This whole thing is a God thing. And so I said, yep, yeah, I'm in. I'll do it. And, uh, and so we started, I started going out with Shonda on the road, uh, filming her, uh, just by myself, no crew, no help, doing everything, audio, camera work, lighting, doing everything, lugging stuff around, no helper, no, no, you know, it was, it was exhausting, <laughs> but I had no budget. I had no money, you know, just doing it myself. And, uh, and then it, it turned into a fathom event, which was going to be in movie theaters. So now I'm like, what? It's going to be in movie theaters. Uh, and, um, so uh, catching up to where we were, where we left off last week. Um, and so I started recognizing, okay, I've got to put this thing together. It's got to be a movie. It's got to be, it's got to tell a story. So I started, uh, got a little whiteboard and started trying to put act one, act two, act three together in the story of the movie, laughing in the dark, uh, uh her daughter becomes estranged. She loses her mother, her husband, uh, you know, the daughter, it says, no, you can't see your grandkids. You can't. Uh, you know, talk to me anymore. I, I just need distance. And, and, you know, it's almost as if she had died. Uh, just no contact. The husband begins drinking. He becomes an alcoholic. Then he drinks himself to death and he dies. This is all going on while we're filming. So she loses her daughter, loses her mom, and then loses her husband. And, uh, and so what started out as this one movie about Shonda Pierce, the comedian, and what her life is like, it turned into a whole other bigger story, which is when your life blows up, where's God? And, uh, you know, you can, you could go on the internet and you can look up, uh, a very popular, uh, uh, you know, guy, minister, ministry, uh, that, that has, uh, you know, 43,500 people a week go to his church. And he'll tell you, this is what you'll see. You'll say, uh, what makes God happy is when you're happy. Amen. That's what makes God happy. God's happy when you're happy. All right. Now, that's that message that, they're, that you're getting in the church. That's what they're giving you. That's how you get. By the way, if you're a pastor and uh, you're concerned about your church size, and you want to know how to have a church with 43,500 people a week come to your church, then this is what you say. God's happy when you're happy. God just wants you to be happy, right? That's how you do it. Just, that's just, that was off the, side, off the cuff. That was free. That didn't cost you anything. Um, so there's all these women uh, in America, and many of them are, you know, Shonda fans, and perhaps their husband's an alcoholic or an addict. Or maybe they, don't, maybe they don't know where their son is. Maybe they haven't talked to him in three years. They don't even know if he's alive or if he's safe. Okay, that woman is not happy. All right? You got that, right? That woman's not happy. So she's going, she's hearing this message from the church. God's happy when you're happy. Well, gosh, God must be really unhappy with me because I'm really unhappy. By the way, I don't, I don't know that Jesus was very happy when he uh, was hanging on the cross. I don't think Paul was very happy by getting his head cut off or when James was thrown off the top of the temple. And when that didn't kill him, they beat his head in with the club. I don't think any of those guys were happy, uh, but, you know, they were doing what God wanted them to do. So if you're listening and you're not happy because your life is blown up, uh, maybe there's something more here. Uh, maybe there's more to the story than this, and maybe you're not getting the whole story from your church. And that's what, what we made the movie for, was was for these women who aren't, the church doesn't know how to talk to them. Their, their husband's an addict, their sons are gone, and they don't know where their sons are, if they're safe. Their lives are blown up, and, and they're not getting it from the church, because all the church wants them to do is be happy. So Sorry, you got me on a little soapbox there, but that was the heart of the movie, was we wanted to make a movie for that woman that would help her navigate and know that even in the midst of your darkest, deepest pain, God is there. God is going to walk you through it. And even if you don't feel like he is, he is, and he's going to get you. You just have to take another step. You have to keep breathing, keep trusting God, and he's going to do this for you. And he will do it. Um, and he's faithful 
and just, and, he's, and he tells the truth, and you can trust him. You can believe in the gospel. And that's our problem. Our, our struggle is that we don't believe the gospel, right? That's why we want to be in control. We want to be in control because we don't believe God is. Well, God, you're not fixing my son the way I want you to fix him. So I'm going to tell you how to fix my son. I want you to do this and do this. And we boss God around. I want you to do that and you do that. Because basically what we're saying is, I don't really think you're doing this the right way. You need my help, God, because you're, you're really not in control. I really don't believe the gospel. And uh, if, if, if you got honest with yourself, that's, that's how you feel when you're trying to control God, when you're trying to control people, uh, when you're mad. At, you're, just, you're, you're really saying, I don't believe the gospel. And we all struggle with that. That's, that, is our ish, that is our struggle. So anyway, kind of getting off track here. Um, my name is Rick Altizer. You're listening to The Rick Altizer Show. And about eight, every eight minutes, i got to chime in and tell you that. We're on Bot Radio. And thank you, Bot Radio, for having me on. Um, so we, we start making this movie. I get, uh, and we, we come up with, with a, a fictional character who, whose name is Gene. And we make this movie for Gene. And uh, Jean doesn't know where her, her son is, and her husband's an addict. And so we're, we're trying to make a movie that's going to bless and minister to Jean and give her what she needs and help her navigate this time in her life. So we start, we, we stopped filming. Shonda had lost her husband, buried her husband, and then we actually, she actually did a concert about five months after, and I got the concert, and we talked about her navigating her life now that she's a widow. And so it's just, it was just heartbreaking. And uh, through this time, my business partner gets, gets it into movie theaters, and it's on, I think it's on uh, f- 505 movie theaters across America. So the pressure starts kicking in. You know, the money starts rolling in for marketing, and, and, and I'm feeling all this pressure because I'm really the only guy doing this. I mean, I'm, I'm doing everything, and uh, I, I'm really kind of on my own here. My son helped me with some filming He's a much better photographer than I'll ever think about being. So I was, uh, you know, I got him to come in after we found out it was going to be a movie. He came in and started doing some filming for me. I gave him the uh, director of photography credit uh, because, you know, I just, it, he made it look like, okay, yeah, this looks like a movie. Um, and so I, I had to get my story together. So I came up with uh, an outline of a three part outline. Uh, she talks a lot about, about her weight. Uh, early on, she was very skinny, and then she talks about spanks and wearing spanks, uh, which are which are for for guys. Guys, not all guys know what spanks are. They're these things that you put on, and they're like girdles that tighten up your stomach and your make your tummy look thinner and your legs look thinner, and they're real tight. And you, you wear them under your clothes. And uh, Shonda says, if you don't know what spanks are, that means your your wife's skinny, and we don't like her anyway. Um, so uh, so so I and then then she kind of towards the end says, you know, I'm spankless. Don't let that, don't let my cellulite hit you on the way out. You know, I'm spankless and, you know, spankless and proud. So I, I kind of differentiated the movie based on that. She talks so much about her weight. So act one was the flat stomach. Act two was Spanx and act three was spankless. So I started with that. So I had, okay, I've, I've got a, a three part where I can move stuff around I had everything transcribed, everything that was spoken, every concert, and her concerts are like two and a half hours long, uh, every interview, every interview I did with a fan, any, if somebody was talking, I had it transcribed, and I had a four-inch thick uh, binder full of transcriptions. And then I whittled those down to my favorite things I kind of highlighted, then I made another document of that, of just my highlights, and then, and while I'm doing this, I'm having to, to also keep track of what file it is, when it was shot, and what file number, so I can find it when I do my edit. Because I'm going to have to find that that sentence, that phrase, and I have to know which file it's on. Because these are all done on digital files, so I have to find. And you know, there's hundreds of files, so I have to know where it is. So I got to also keep track of that. Then from there, I whittled that down uh, to, to to smaller chunks, and I put them on four by six index cards. And then I got a four by six index card box that had all these index tabs. And I have the flat stomach, I have Spanx, I have Spankless, and then I have stories. You know, her, her childhood, her dad, uh, David, her husband, her daughter, um, you know, this particular joke that she might have. And I started organizing all the things that she said into different categories. 
And uh, so, so then, then I was able to pick from the categories. Okay, she tells this joke, and I've got it, her telling her that joke in six different venues. So I have her telling the joke six times. So what I did was I took the best parts of each night. Because see, this is just me and one camera. So it's not like a six-camera shoot and a $2 million budget. It's me and a camera. So you know, how do I make it look like a movie? So I took the same, the one joke that she told six different times on six different nights, and I took the best part of each night, and I edited them all together. And by doing that, I'm able to tighten up her jokes. I actually make them quicker and funnier, and I'm getting the best delivery from each night. And it had this look, because it's just a one-camera shoot, right? But it was going from night to night to night, and it had this, and she's wearing a different outfit, and her hair looks different. It's a different background. But it had this look like she's all over the world. She's touring all over the place, and she's, she's, you know, she's this big thing. And really, it was just because I just had one camera, and that's all I had to use. And so by, by using my limitations, that's the other thing, is you want to use your limitations to be creative, to create something that you wouldn't normally do. Normally, you got a six camera shoot. You're not gonna you're not gonna take six venues with a six camera shoot. That's thirty six cameras to deal with. You're not gonna want to do that. But with just one camera angle at each night, you, that's what I had to work with. And so I make a scene of her telling a joke from four or five different locations. And now it's funnier, it's quicker, and it has a look like it's coming from all over, all over the world. And here's Shonda Pierce on the road. You know doing her thing and it just really had a good feel and then then i would cut from the funny and then i had her telling these stories about about you know her manager who said your kids are going to bounce back they're going to be more happy about getting a new car than having a mom there for soccer and then she starts crying on camera and he was dead wrong you know she she you start seeing the pain of how she her career was keeping her away from her family and how she how, how she feels like she's being how she's paying for that now. So you get all this pain, you get all this. And so I go from the pain to the funny pain to the funny. And it really, it really worked. It it, it really. So by the time I was done, I I edited it, came up with a, about a two hour edit that I just did myself, not knowing really what I was doing. And uh, then we, we went to a real editor and uh, Andy Kouris is his name here in Nashville and uh, Andy looked at it and said, Rick, this is not a, you, you did a movie. This, is a, this isn't a rough cut. You made a movie. So he said, I will not take a, an editing credit. I, I insist that we share editing credit on this. And then he took what I did and made it great. He just made it so good. And uh, uh, you're listening to Rick Altizer. Sorry, here's my cut in again. The Rick Altizer Show on Bot Radio. Uh, that's the last time you'll hear that today. And, uh, and, and so by the time we were done, we had this really nice little 82, 83 minute movie documentary on Shonda that was really powerful. And it was just a God thing. God just did this. Uh, how this happens, I don't know, but God did it. We, we went to, you know, we, we delivered it. All of a sudden, people are buying tickets, and, 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 the, and the, the theaters are selling out. And Tulsa has eight theaters, and they're all sold out. You can't get a ticket in Th- Tulsa. You can't get a ticket in Nashville. It's, they're sold out everywhere. I did a little trailer, and the trailer had two million, uh, a two million reach in 24 hours on Facebook. Did this little trailer of her story. It was so compelling, and, and, and we had a publicist, and the publicist got her on Entertainment Tonight, and she's in all these magazines, and she's on all these radio, and, and because the story of losing her husband and, and this movie, and just all this press, and, and, and the opening night, it was the number five movie in America. I mean, it was just this huge success, and uh, I have no idea how that happens. I'm sitting here even trying to explain it. Yeah, I'm a year and a half out from that. No idea how that happened. That was just a God thing, how that happened. But through it all, God came through. And and, uh, as I said last week, I told Shonda, I'm not going to make a beauty piece. I'm not interested in that. I want to do something that ministers, that has value. So here's here's point number three. If you're going to do on how to make a movie, if you're doing anything for the Christian market, you have got to make it minister. It's got to hit home. Uh, the Kendrick brothers, who were actually, I interviewed them. You can check out their interviews on my website. What they say, and it's was been their, 
they're what they kind of live by. Now it's what I live by. I don't want the good idea. I want the God idea. It has to be a God idea. And when you when you water it down and you take out Jesus and you take out the gospel, what happens is, and you, you see them all the time, these movies come to the theaters and the movie studios get involved and they take out all the Jesus and those movies tank. They don't do well at all. And you look at uh, the movies that do well, you know, let's look, let's talk about the Kendrick brothers. You look at how well their movies do. They are right on target with their message and they don't, they don't move it. They don't uh, water it down for anybody. As a matter of fact, it's in their contract with Sony. They have uh, absolute, as far as the doctrine goes, Sony can't say a word. They have 100% control over the doctrine of their movie. So they, they wouldn't even sign with Sony unless Sony gave them complete control of the Jesus in their movie. So of, of the Jesus message. And that's how you have a successful. Now, I've kind of talked about how to make a movie. Kind of, I hope. I, do, I hope this is good, guys. I'm just kind of rambling. I've never done this before. So thanks for hanging in there with me if you're listening to this. But they make these movies that have been so successful, and this is how you make a successful Christian movie, is you make a Christian movie that has a strong message that is about ministry, that's about helping people. And that's what we did with this movie. We, we made it for Gene. And the, the opening night, I had a, a friend from church, she's an elderly uh, woman from church, who saw it. And after the movie, she came up to me and she said, she said, Rick, I haven't talked to my daughter in 20 years. And I cannot tell you how powerful this movie was and what it meant to me. And that's why I made the movie. That night we had the big party and they said, hey, we're the number five movie in America. Yeah, it's a big success. And that was all great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we end up winning an award, you know, wins a, some best documentary award, whatever. And that's all great and fine. Hey, don't, don't get me wrong. That's great. That's awesome. But when I heard my friend say, I can't tell you what this movie meant to me, that's why I made it. And that, that has to be your payoff. That has to be your paycheck. It can't be about how many seats you get. The marketing people are going to take care of that. But at the end of the day, you've got to make something that's going to move somebody that's going to make them say, this changed my life. This helped me. I needed this. Thank you. And if you, if you keep that as your heart, when you make a movie, when you keep that as your heart, when we're working on something like that, and it, you know, it doesn't have to be movies. It could be whatever you do in your, in your job, in your life. Heck, you could make blue jeans. I don't care what it is. Whatever you do, if the purpose and the focus is to serve, to love, to bless others, and you keep that the center, you keep that the center of who you are and why you do what you do, then now you've given God free reign to go do what he does. And that's what he did with this movie, Laughing in the Dark. If you have Amazon Prime, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. Just look, Shonda Pierce, Laughing in the Dark. And... uh and now I'm in the middle of making a second movie, and it's going to be in theaters April 25th. Uh, tickets are on sale right now. Uh, you can go to shondamovie.com and uh, get information about it. But now I'm in the middle of another movie, uh, doing this again. And uh, what we had 505 screens last time are theaters. We're already, we haven't, tickets aren't even, tickets go on sale. Uh, well, they're on sale now when you hear this. We have 776 screens. Uh, uh, theaters will be on probably double the amount of screens that the first movie was on. And again, it's just a God thing. Uh, you know, I have no idea how this happens, but it's just a God thing. So anyway, how to make a movie by Rick Altizer or how I made this movie. And I hope you got something out of this that blessed you. I hope uh, this, this helped you in some way. I am going to talk about in a future date how to get a record deal. Uh, that was another part of an uh, earlier part of my life, and I will explain that uh, how that happened in another uh, episode. So thank you so much for listening, and I'll talk to you soon. The music you are listening to is from my Scripture Memory record, and I want to give it to you for free. Just go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and click Contact. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. Or how about liking my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Show. I want to thank Paul Winkler, the Investor Coach, for sponsoring this show, and I want to thank you for listening. So be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. It is not rude. It does not 
insist on its own way It is not easily angered love But rejoices in the truth Love bears all things Believes all things Hopes all things Endures all things